Hey guys, this is Civil Learning Online and this is 6th lecture on project management. In this video, I am going to discuss about frequency distribution curve, beta distribution curve and its uses in part analysis as well as the mean mode median, how it is used in uh, part analysis and without any further delay, let's get started. And you will be able to download the notes of this video from the description. So do download the note and let's continue our today's lecture. So let's begin our today's lecture on frequency distribution curve. Uh, suppose we have an activity A which, are, which is to be completed under some condition and in the previous lecture we have learnt about uh, three types of time estimates which were uh, optimistic time estimate, pessimistic time estimate and most likely time estimate. That concept is going to be used uh, in this lecture also. So uh, till now we have learnt that optimistic time estimate is the shortest time in which an activity can be completed pessimistic time under ideal condition yeah and the second was pessimistic time estimate was the maximum time which uh, in which an activity can be completed when uh, nothing goes as per our plan means some adverse condition uh, exists there and most likely time is the most travel time in which the maximum uh, activities are completed during that period had considered an activity A which was to be completed under some condition. So, uh, if we are able to complete perform this activity A in short period of time, then that is our optimistic time. If uh, nothing goes our as per our plan, and then this activity may require much time to complete, then at that time will be our pessimistic time. And uh, if you uh, we draw a graph of that activity A uh, then we will have a frequency distribution curve here uh, we are we have frequency distribution curve is uh, a graph which is plotted between the number of activity and the time if we have least time least time is required means in during that period we have completed few number of activity of a project similarly if we are we are required larger time to complete an activity that is our pessimistic time and while drawing the frequency distribution curve between uh, between the number of activities completed and the time required to complete that activity we will find that the maximum number of activity will be completed in most likely time uh, when we have a closer look to this curve then we can see that uh, most likely time is uh, lying between the optimistic time or uh, this uh, optimistic time and pessimistic time and the number of activity completed during that most likely time period is uh, high and uh, these time estimates are calculated by the estimator on the basis of the past experience as uh, and the data provided to that estimator or planner so and such curve is such curve is called a unimodal curve because it has single hump now we will uh, learn about some other type of frequency distribution curve uh, which we will see while doing the project planning or estimating the time. So, discussing about the frequency distribution curve of this figure A, we can see that the difference between TL and T naught is 1. Here, difference between TL and T naught is 1, and the difference between TL and TP is 3. So, this curve is called as skew left curve. Similarly, if we talk about the curve which is in diagram B, then we can see here the difference between TL and T naught is 3. Similarly, the difference between TL and TP is 1 here. So, this curve is skew right. Now, talking about the frequency distribution curve of diagram C and D, here we can see that the difference between TL and T naught is 3 difference between TL and T naught is 3. Similarly, the difference between TL and TP is again 3 here. And same is the case here. Difference between TL and T naught is 1. And here also, difference between TL and TP is 1. So, the curve of diagram C and D are symmetrical about the apex. So, these two curves are called as normal curve. And these two curves are, first one is of A is skew left and the second one is skew right and these two are normal curves now let's move to the new topic 
so after frequency distribution curve second type of curve that we are going to study is beta distribution curve and uh, beta distribution curve came into action because uh, scientists were looking for some features which were not provided by the frequency distribution and we are going to uh, learn about that uh, why beta distribution curve section and before that let us uh, deal with the two points which i have mentioned here already and it is beta distribution curve is a type of probability distribution which fits well for part analysis it is because of the features which the beta, beta distribution curve carries and the second thing is it is not symmetrical about its apex means uh, the beta distribution curve is either uh, skew left or skew right here i have drawn two type of diagram of beta distribution curve you can see it is plotted between the probability as well as the time duration second and the the first one is skew left and the second one is skew right and uh, here are some features which uh, made beta distribution curve to be used in the part analysis and the first one is the distribution should have a small probability of reaching the most optimistic time it should have a small probability for reaching the optimistic time second thing is the distribution should have a small probability of reaching the most pessimistic time longest time uh, it is clear already and the third feature is the distribution should have one and only one most likely time means the distribution curve should have uh, means the scientist we're looking for is or estimator we're looking for some curve which should have only one which should be unimodal curve means it should carry have only one uh, most likely time and which was available in beta distribution curve and uh, which would be free to move between the two extremities mentioned in one and two means it should the curve should be unimodal and it should uh, have two extremities which were optimistic time and the pessimistic time and most likely time will fluctuate between these two time estimates and the fourth point is the distribution should be such that the amount of force on uncertainty in estimating can be measured easily means the, uh, the scientist or the estimator would not find any difficulty in uh, measuring the uncertainty which may they may face while carrying out a project and there are two formulas for finding the standard deviation and variance uh, in beta distribution curve and they they are as you can see here standard deviation sigma equals to tp minus t naught means pessimistic time minus optimistic time divided by 6 gives will gives us uh, standard deviation similarly for variance is sim simply the square of standard deviation so first either you can find the standard deviation then square it to get the variance or you can simply use it as per shown in the formula that is tp minus t naught upon 6 whole square now let's move to our new next topic in which we will learn about mean deviation variance and standard deviation so first of all i would like to take you through the meaning of these terms and then i will solve an example and we will calculate mean deviation variance and standard deviation of that question so first of all what is mean mean is the distribution mean of the distribution may be defined by the algebraic sum of time duration taken by various job divided by the number of jobs so here mean is denoted by tm and which is equal to the sum of all the duration in a project there are different activities which have different duration or, or, or time required for their completion and we, we what we do for calculating the mean we add all the duration of each and every activity and then divide it by the number of activity then it will give us mean and the second term is deviation deviation is the difference between the time under consideration and the mean time means uh, deviation is time suppose we have an activity a mean of an activity is 2 and uh, the deviation uh, and the duration required for an activity a is 3 then what we do we subtract these two means 3 minus 2 will give us 1 then 1 is our deviation and the third point is variance variance is the mean of square deviation it is expressed by sigma square so we have sigma square equals to summation deviation square upon n and deviation is simply t minus tm whole square divided by the number of activities so variance is commonly used in statics as a measure of variability of the distribution means how um, how much the deviation is varying from one another that is the uh, if we measure that then that, that is called as variance and the third thing is standard deviation 
standard deviation is it is simply the square root of the variance means if we square this value then it will gives us standard deviation now let us have a look to add an example and in that example we will calculate mean deviance deviation variance and standard deviation so let us consider a project a in which there are number of activities a b c d e and the time required for completion of these activities b uh three days five days seven days nine days and again let it be three days now if we are calculating the mean then what we do mean is sum of the duration of all the activities divided by the number of activities so mean will be given by t these are duration it is duration and this is activities so mean will be equals to mean will be equals to 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 3 divided by the number of activities so here it is 5 we will get some value of mean so here we will get 5.4 now time to calculate deviation so uh, deviation is denoted by delta and deviation equals to t minus t mean means that we need to calculate the deviation of each and every activity so for activity a t is 3 so 3 minus mean is 5.4 on doing so here we will get minus 2.4 and that is our value of deviation for activity a similarly for activity b it is 7 minus 5.4 here we will get 1.6 similarly for c it is 9 sorry oh it is for c sorry for that and uh, for activity b it was 5 minus 5.4 we will get 0 0.4 similarly for activity d it is 9 minus 5.4 so we will get 0 0.6 and uh, 3 3.6 similarly for e we will get 3 minus 5.4 again we will get minus 2.4 this was for deviation now we need to calculate variance so variance will be equals to we have already learned about the formula that is variance is equal to summation deviation square deviation is denoted by delta summation deviation square upon n so here what we need to do is we have to uh, uh, square all these values and then we will uh, do the sum and then divide it by the number of terms so divide it by 5 and on squaring 2.4 we will get some value for deviation square square these all value and uh, write it here then do the sum and calculate the final answer so we get these values 5.76 plus 2.56 plus 0 0.16 plus 12.96 plus 5.76 and whole divide by 5 on doing so we will get 5.44 now it's time to find the standard deviation so standard deviation is actually the square root of variance square root of variance so simply do the square root of 5.44 we will get root under 5.44 we will get 2.33 2.33 and that is our answer i hope so I hope you this video was helpful to you guys uh, do like this video and share this video with your friend and do subscribe the channel if you do not want to miss any update from civil learning online.